Today we are creating a super fun photo collage based on a graphic and colorful style. I'm so excited. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our image for today. I love this photograph that I want to see more like vibrancy and color. And I'm kind of thinking like I want to create a roller skate ad. So when I saw this photo, first thing I wanted to do was add a bunch of flowers and colors and lights to it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with some flowers. Now you guys can download all this stuff on Florin.com, all these stock images. There we go. And the PSD. So if you want to see what we're doing, but all of this is just from Pexels.com. It's all free stock photos. So I've got my stock here, we've got beautiful flower and I want to put this behind my subject. So I need to do a couple of things. If I want to get behind my subject, first thing I need to do is actually cut out my subject. So let's click on our background here. We're going to go to select up here at the very top and then down to where it says select subject. There we go. And now you can see our subject is in fact selected. And then all I'm going to do is create a duplicate of this background layer. Just click and drag it to the new layer icon. Okay. And then I'm going to click right here on my layer mask icon. There we go. And it's going to automatically load that selection into the mask. So now I can actually place this on the top of everything. There we go. And you're going to see I have a subject on top of anything that I put under there. So that's going to be huge for this. Super easy to cut out your subject with select subject. Now this other uh, sunflower here, I want this to be behind our subject, but I need the sky to be cut out. So we're actually going to use select subject again. Let's go up here to select and then down here to subject. There we go. Believe it or not, it works on other things, uh, uh, not people. It works on flowers and things like that. So let's click on our layer mask there. Okay. And then you can see we have our subject visible above. And then I have this other photograph and I want to select subject this one as well. So control or command T to transform. Let's just make that a little bit smaller. There we go. Let's try select and then down here to select subject. Okay. Now in this case, you can see it didn't work perfectly. It kind of like made this awkward selection. I really want it to be out here. So we're going to try Photoshop's new object selection tool instead. Let's go right over here. It looks like your magic wand tool. You have your object select, quick selection tool and magic wand tool. Let's go to the object selection tool up at the top. Now here at the very top, you can see you have object finder. Go ahead and check that on and you're going to see this is working. It's kind of trying to figure out what it can actually select. And then you can hit this button right next to it and that's going to show you it's like a blue outline here. Just turn this off and on. That's going to show you what it can actually select. So sometimes if you have like multiple people in your images, you can, it'll like highlight all of them in blue. And if you need to change the color, you can just click on your little uh, gear icon right here and change the color. I'm going to change it to red just so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Okay. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and turn this off. There we go. Or turn it on rather. So we can see what we select and then simply just click on the thing you want selected and you can see it did a great job selecting out the sunflower. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and click on our layer mask for that as well. Okay. We're going to just turn off our object selection tool for now and turn on our subject. So I want to just start like rearranging things. Now I've got this cool sunflower graphic in the background. Uh, I don't really want this snail visible in there. So let's hit control or command T. We're just going to scale this up or snail this up. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't even. All right. That's looking pretty good there. And then I like this sunflower. Let's just make this a little bit larger. I'm going to bring our control point there and then just kind of like stretch this up. Hold alt or option and it'll grow with your control point. All right. There we go. So it's kind of like right behind our subject. And then I've got just a little bit of empty space here that I want to fill. So let's hit control or command J to duplicate that sunflower. And then I'm going to hit control or command T and then rotate it around. There we go. Got one there. Now, of course, you can move this stuff at any time. Control or command J to make a duplicate and then control or command T to kind of stretch it up and move it around. All right. There we go. That is super fun already. I love this. So this image is looking really cool, but I want to add even more like graphic elements to it. I want to make it look like our subject is kind of like skating on like a rainbow. I want to bring in a bunch of different colors. So I just did a search on Pexels and found this really cool image here of uh, it, it's just a building, right? But it has all these different colors in it. So I want to use this kind of as like an overlay on to the image. So the first thing we're going to do is change our blend mode to overlay. You guessed it. So right here where it says normal, I'm going to just click that and go down to where it says overlay. There we go. And you can see it actually like brings the colors into anything that I put it on and it's underneath my subject. So let's go ahead and warp this around. I want to kind of have it follow the curve of this background a little bit. 
Controller Command T, we're gonna right click and go down to where it says flip horizontal at the very bottom. There we go, and I'm gonna right click here and then go down to where it says warp. Now warp is super cool because you can just kind of like click and drag and move your texture around and you can use these little anchor tools. There we go, to kind of define how you want the warp to be. And I really like this. I think it's kind of like a fun, just like, you know, uh, like this line that kind of curves up and then curves down. I think it goes really well actually with, with this image. So let's just go ahead and continue to warp this around. I'm just gonna bring this point on the bottom way down there. I just want it to like kind of cover everything. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but it would be nice if it, if it covered everything. So let's just kind of bring it up there. There we are. And then you can always layer mask. Like if it, uh, if it's like sticking up the sky a little bit here too much, that's okay. I'll just layer mask that out in a second. There we go. So the image is looking really good. I just need to add a layer mask to kind of like get rid of the sky and the extra area over here. So to add a layer mask, all you have to do is simply click on your layer mask icon right here. And then if you want to, you can just paint with your brush tool. So a lot of the times I just paint black with my brush tool on my layer mask, and then that's gonna like hide this area. So again, just B for the brush tool. I'm just painting black where I don't want it to be visible. Now you can do like a really perfect job cutting out your sky, or you can just kind of choose a large soft edge brush and just kind of fade it out. That works too. There we go. That's looking super, super good. All right, I love that rainbow on the floor. Okay, next step. I want this to be even more graphic. So I wanna bring kind of like a texture in and have this overlay on pretty much everything except for my subject. So I found this really cool texture here. This is like a watercolor texture. By the way, you guys can download all of this. I know I've already said this, but uh, just follow the link down below. It's totally free, you can follow along. So I have this watercolor texture. Uh, I'm just gonna bring it over this way and then uh, let's just stretch it up and out a little bit. There we go, fantastic, this looks good. And then I need to interact with my image a little bit more. So this is where we change our blending modes. Let's go from normal, you can actually just kind of like scroll through them and see what you like. That's a really great place to start with blending modes. You don't have to know what everything does. Now, in this case, I really like this lighten blend mode, but it's like too strong. <laughs> I want less of it. So all you have to do is lower the opacity, no big deal. So right here where you see opacity, just you can click right there on the word and start to drag that to the left there, okay? And we just wanna find something that like allows us to still see the interesting background in there, uh, but adds this texture and color over top of it. All right, that's looking super cool. Keep in mind, all of this stuff is non-destructive. You can turn any of these layers off and on, change them around, warp them, move them at any point in time. Like you wanna move this thing, no big deal. Grab your move tool and, and move it around. All right, looking good. Now. Looking at this, the next thing I wanna do is add uh, more like sparks and light and kind of like more fun elements. So I did a stock image search for sparks and here's what I found. So let's go ahead and find, I've got these sparks. Let's just click and drag them right into our image. There we go, fantastic. And let's bring them above this texture. Now, right now, the sparks here, you can see uh, it's just like literally a dude or, a lady's hand like holding a sparkler, right? We don't want any of that. And I don't wanna to try to cut out these sparks. What we wanna do instead is change our blending mode. We wanna get rid of the dark and make sure only the light is visible. And to do that, all you have to do is change the blend mode to screen. So right here where it says normal, this is our blend modes. Just click on that and then go all the way down to where it says screen, boom. And you can see the black in the background is completely invisible. The hand for the most part is invisible too and we just have these sparks. Now, if you wanna kinda of enhance this a little bit more, all you have to do is make your darks darker and they'll become invisible, right? Because this blend mode is making all the dark stuff invisible. So you can hit Controller Command L for your levels. There we go. And right here, this little slider will make your darks darker. So you can see as I bring that down, there we go. You can see now I'm not able to see those elements that I could see earlier. So let's go ahead and bring this down. I wanna make it like, again, I'm. I'm thinking this is like a kind of a fun uh, like roller skating, you know, ad or something like that. So I'm like, yeah, let's do that right there on the roller skate. That's super, super cool. And then I wanna bring in a little bit more sparks. So we're just gonna bring in this other image. This is also sparks, uh, but there's sparks that are hearts. How perfect is that? 
<laughs> Let's change our blend mode from normal to screen, just like we did before. How easy is that to cut those out? Super cool. And let's go ahead and stretch that. Maybe we make it a little bit bigger. And I want those hearts kind of like surrounding my subject. There we go. Obviously, you can move any of this stuff around, but I think this is looking super cool. Now, last little detail. I want even more color in this. I know we got a lot of color already, but uh, let's bring in some rainbows. Why not? <laughs> so, <laughs> I found this picture of a rainbow here. Let's just click and drag this in. There we go. Even that just looks cool, right? This is such a cool image. Uh, anything I would have done with this photo would have been cool. But um, I want just this rainbow to be visible and I want the background to be invisible. So I'm gonna use the same blending mode here that I used with the sparks. We're gonna use the screen blending mode, okay? So let's change this uh, from normal down to screen, okay? And I'm actually gonna bring this to this very top. I want it to be even above my subject. So it's set to screen, and just like we did before, we're gonna use levels to make this look a little bit better because I can still see way too much of the sky. So controller command L for your levels. There we go. And then we're gonna take our dark point here and just drag that from the left to the right. And that just makes your darks darker and in the screen blend mode, just kind of makes them invisible, right? So there we have like just the rainbow from that rainbow photograph. Controller command T, let's just stretch this a little bit larger. There we go. And then you can kind of just like move it and warp with it and things like that as you want. There we go. I think this is really fun, like kind of like coming from the shoe and out this way. And I want to add another one. And I'm kind of choosing this one to be over top of our subject. Uh, let's hit Controller Command J and then uh, just put one over there too. And then if you need to, you can see like a little bit of this background still visible here. You can just pop a quick layer mask on that and then paint black on your layer mask. There we go. So it's only visible just where you want it, just the rainbow part. You don't need the sky visible. There we go. And I'm gonna kind of lower the opacity there, but kind of a fun little way to add some like more color and light into an image. Literally, it's actually rainbows. Um, and I'm choosing to put those above our subject. Man, this is super, super cool. Let's go ahead down here all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click on this layer mask icon. So this is our before image, before we did anything at all. And here is our after. Let's hit full screen. I'm just gonna group all of those together. There we go. And full screen this out. Here's our before and the after. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this kind of like fun graphic style tutorial. Let me know if you did. I'm super happy to make more of this kind of content. Let me know in a comment down below what you'd like to learn. Hit that big like button. And if you want to get free Photoshop tutorials every single week, click on that subscribe button. Thanks so much. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.